we're in a wood somewhere in Wales and we've heard there is treasure to be found hope you enjoy this location today it's all new to us and it's exciting because we're on a new site in Wales obviously we can't disclose the location as this is a gift to us from one of our lovely viewers who sent us an email and suggested that when we're out on our travels we may want to pay this location a visit and check it out and that's what we're going to do and so far just getting here has not been a disappointment it's a long way off the beaten track but to walk through fields of bluebells dappled shade through the trees it's just been amazing already and now we're going to search and try and find where the bottle diggers have been and what have they left behind for us to collect. We're following the trail and we have started to see a few little bits and pieces. Here we've got a little bit of blue and white striped pottery. And here, this I assume used to be copper. Oh, it still is copper, but it's now covered in verdigris. Hmm, so that's quite old. We're definitely going in the right direction. I think we've arrived at a spot on the trail which is of significant interest. Oh, why is that? Well, you know Caroline likes her vintage plastic. Oh, squeezy bottle! With threatens old money off. <laughs> so we're back in the 60s at least. And, of a course, bottle. I like my little milk bottles. Oh, that's a cute one. And I've just picked these two up together. Right. So I think this area warrants a bit of exploration right let's go explore right let's have a look it's looking exciting that's a glass bottle it's a lovely interesting shape i would imagine they put the label on there does any of you recognize what that bottle would have been i've never seen one like that but there are lots of bottles here lots of jars milk bottles that looks like a, a bleach bottle or something. Sorry if I'm a bit oh, wobbly on this, it's very steep. And I want to be careful because there's such a lot of glass underfoot. You can see lots of jars. What's that tin there? Can you see anything on that tin? No, it's not a tin. Oh, it is a tin. <laughs> Full of gloopy, mucky stuff, which is all dried out and gone solid. If we look up, I can see a light bulb and a few bits and pieces and an intrepid mud larker. But I'm not going all the way up there. I'm just going to check what's on the lower levels. Is Monkey okay? He's fine. Good. He's enjoying the climb. That's good. Oop, we've got a bit of a landslide. Phil's trying to come back down and the land is coming with him. A big... a, I am a landslide. You are. It's a bit precarious <laughs> underfoot, isn't it? Very steep and very unstable. Oh, <laughs> will he make it and still be on his feet? <laughs> I got a piece caught! Oh well! I got a piece caught! Oh. I've also got a, a welly full of, my, of dirt. Oh lovely! That's it. Could be worse. Yeah? Yes, I was watching the Lancashire Medlarks on their latest video and he managed to slip like this and landed in the water. Well that's not funny. <laughs> At least I haven't got soggy socks. No. I've just got an awful lot of grit under my foot. Ooh. This is Phil's sock after he's cleaned it up a little bit. You've got a welly full of mud, haven't you? Well, it's not so much mud, it's... Oh, just it's, a second, look, I've got a leaf on the lens. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sharp little bits of grit and stone and ash and goodness mm. knows what. And it jolly hurts. Oh. But... I did get the paste pot on the way down for you. Oh, there we go. That's a little cute one. There's a helicopter going over. That's a nice one. one. And on the cute theme. Yep, a little cute rinky dinky. And it's got a little um, logo. Little bottle, what does it say on the CUD, I think. I can't turn it round. I've got too much in my hand. Yes, it's going to be... Um, perhaps a D is for dairies. Yeah, it could be. Uh, United Dairies. Mm. You know, something like that. And... This one, not an old bottle, but nicely... Hackdoz or Hackdoz for cots. Yeah, so I thought I'd look oh, that up. I like that one. We haven't got one of those. That's quite nice. Now, check that out. Mm. So I got that and mm. you know me. Yes, it's going to be melted. Oh, a melted wonky bottle. Look, look at, at that. that. 
That's lovely. That's well worth a boot full of rubbish. Well, you're saying that, and I look to the side of you because I'm terrible for letting my eyes wander when I'm You are, me. you are. You don't focus here, you don't no, focus. I don't look. <laughs> Look at oh, my jam well, jar. Oh, now that's a nice jar. <laughs> it's completely closed on the top. Oh, is it shut totally? A, no, there's no, just a little bit of space. There's probably enough room just to clean it with a tiny brush. Yep. And the bits will come out. And there's nothing living in there as such. It's not an ecosystem. So I reckon in the bag. Okie dokie. We're just taking a stroll along through this woodland. See if we can find any more holes from the bottle diggers and any more spoils they've left. So while we do that, when you pop over with me to the shed and have a little look at what I've been getting up to down there this week. There's a royal flavour at the shed today. No, we've not got a visit from Prince Charles or the Queen, uh, but it is linked to royalty, the piece of craft that I want to make for you. It's a piece that's going to combine our love of thrifting. As you know, we love going to the charity stores. Caroline, every single week, I believe it's on a Tuesday, she puts out a video of her finds from the thrift stores that she can use in craft. And each week she spends about £10 and finds some amazing things. Well, you know I love going to the thrift stores. I've showed you items before. Amazing items from history that I've picked up for a few pounds. And today I'm going to take an item from a thrift store, combine it with an item that we found on the dump, and combine it with a royal flavour. Yes, inspired by this find that was on last week's video, which was the commemoration mug for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II as she celebrated her coronation. 70 years ago, about to have the celebrations here in the United Kingdom and I dare say around the world in various places for her platinum jubilee. That's some achievement to be doing a job for 70 years. So inspired by this, I want to make a piece myself. But this piece is linked further back in history again. So what am I doing? Well, I have this. Found this piece along with this piece and this piece some time ago. And of course, nothing gets thrown away around here. It's been in storage and came across it when I was sorting out here at the shed and decided that I could take these pieces and make my own commemorative item. And as well as these pieces, in order to make my commemorative item, I'm going to take this find that we got from a dump, which is a jar that once stored marmalade or jam, but of course, unusual in as much as it's not ridged. So I've got that little pot, lovely little thing, and I have my find from the thrift store, which is this. And it cost the princely sum of... 50p. So there we go. A 50p toast rack, which is going to now be converted into a piece for my desk here in the shed. Enough talking. Let's get crafting. There's the image fitted onto the pot. But I'm just going to try something now. An idea I've had as I was just putting this together and uh, I've seen others do this and just thought it might be worth a try. And that's just to create a panel on the front here by adding some old newspapers that have come from the dump. A bit of newspaper print around the bottom. Just going to see what that looks like and hopefully that will enhance the look of this 
piece. Let's have a go. Sorry if I lost some footage there. I thought the camera was on and it wasn't. But all I simply did was take a little bit of PVA glue and a brush, applied it to the pot and just added these little pieces of newspaper which have come from the dump and created that sort of uh, extra feature to the front. Now I did think about going all the way around but for the moment I've decided to leave it as it is. I can always add later if I choose but I quite like seeing the crack in the pot as well on the back. So we'll see how that goes. But the next question is exactly what is this all about? How do they all go together? Well that's quite simple because if I take the letter rack and just remove the price tag then that's ready. Yes, I said letter rack. I know you think, no, Phil, it's a toast rack. And this is meant to take a jar of marmalade and this will take your pieces of toast. Not any longer, folks. This is going to be on my lovely desk. It's going to have this positioned just there. And I'm going to pop my pens and pencils and other items into the pot. I've even got a nice vintage compass here with a pencil attached. I'll take somebody back to their school days, I'm sure. Pop that in there. And there we have it. And then if I've got any items around, I'll just use this for a moment, just as an example. But if I've got postcards or letters or whatever, then obviously they can simply pop in there and they go on my desk. So there we have it, folks. And I'll just place it on the desk for you to see now. And then we'll head back over to that amazing location, which is so beautiful and such a gorgeous place to be on this wonderful, bright spring day. But of course, we're also looking for treasures. So just before you go back, here is my new letter rack and pen holder on its desk. Well, my t-shirt may read, pop your wellies on, but the further we go into this wood, the further we come from the river bank. But it's worth the walk because right here, under this dense foliage, I see some evidence of bottle digging. The earth has been disturbed up above and here I see things like this. It's smashed. Ooh, it's a bottle. And it's got a bit of age, perhaps a little more age than we saw earlier. Mm. So we may be getting to an older point. So the next thing to do is for me to just climb up above that ridge there and see what lies beyond. Go on then, we'll walk. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very kind of you. I've got monkey for company, I'll be all right. Oh, you'll be fine. He's still in your pocket, is he? Of course, my dear, of course. He's safe and sound. And he keeps wanting to go back and slide down again. Right. He thought it was most hilarious. Like a gazelle. <laughs> While Phil's exploring up there, we're going to have a look and see what's fallen down. we got this bottle here, which is malt vinegar. That's a big vinegar bottle. Oh, I wonder if they use that in the fish and chip shop. Um, and this looks like it could be a sauce bottle. Yeah, probably Heinz. Oh, I can see a lovely bit of enamel over there. I got a cracking pan. Have a look at this. Whee! Ah, <laughs> it didn't get all the way down to us. So let's have a look at this. Is it leave that? I don't want to come out. Oh, that's a lovely little enamel. 
know, it's big enough to be a little roasting dish, perhaps. I'm not sure. I'm going to pop that there because underneath it, look. Take that leaf off there. It's a lovely little spoon. Oh, I like that. That is lovely. That's a really good find. That's the sort of thing that is different to the usual bottles and jars, so we're definitely keeping that. I can see something that looks like it could be lead over there. It could be a stone, but it could be lead. No, it's a piece of coke out of an old coal fire. When the coal burns away, quite often it leaves this coke stuff. Ah, oh, well. I found a shovel. A shovel again. Shovel Come man. On, Here you are. I'll try again. Okay, here we go. Look at that. Well, you just missed me. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the size on that shovel. I don't suppose you can see if I put my foot by it first. You can see it's bigger than my foot. Oh, it's heavy. Put it there. Look at that. I wonder if that was left by a bottle digger. I think they're so old though. And there's little bits on it. I think perhaps that was used for shoveling the coal or shoveling the ash out of a coal fire. Possibly. Perhaps something from a school because it's quite big. I wouldn't have used a shovel that size in my home. On the other hand, it could be something that they use to put the tar down on the road, something like that. Not quite sure, but it's a big one. I'm trying to rescue that thing that Phil threw down. Oh, we've got it. Oh, look, it's a number plate. A very old number plate. RTO3375. RTO375. I wonder if we can trace that back to a car it was on. That would be lovely. That's definitely coming home with us. I love that. It's a shame the five is missing, but that's a very small thing when you think how lovely the item is as a whole. I bet Phil will end up with that hanging in his shed. He does love old things to hang in the shed. Hello, Hello. Mr. Johnson. I'm coming down. You mean the landslide again? Look at that. You've got to be very careful on this earth. It is so, so soft. There you go. It's handy for standing my stick up. Oh, well. I just got to remember to take my stick with me now. Yeah, you've left so many sticks on dumps. Now, up on the top there beyond the ridge, there is an array of bits and pieces, uh, bits of scrap and bottles, quite a few a hole. But because of the relatively modern age and the fact that I have several the same, I didn't pick up everything that I saw up there. But as you can see, there was quite an array left by the bottle diggers. But I did pick up one or two things, as well as the shovel, which I am contemplating taking home with me, because I think that would be beautiful for a piece of craft. And the, the bottle that I sent down, I found a, a little bottle. Oh, it's a cute little bottle. Which yeah. I believe probably held alcohol and was one of those mm, miniatures. To be. So because it was so small, I decided it could go in the bag. Another bit of scrap. Now, this will surprise oh, I like you. That. Catch hold of that. It looks like a lid or something, but feel the weight. Oh, that's very heavy. Isn't it? I, I wonder if it was to put a, a rope on and tether something down. I don't know. Oh, it's a plug from the bottom of the sea. It could be. It looks very plug shaped. One thing that crossed my mind was a, mm -hmm. a lid for a crucible. Oh, right, for, for melting. For melting or something, because it's yeah. so heavy. Mm. And then you'd have this and you'd hook something under and lift it off. Oh, yes, yeah, good. That's be. what crossed my mind when I picked it up. Right. But I'll concede to plug from the bottom of the sea if you wish okay <laughs> uh you can vote on that folks but i thought it was neat wasn't it very nice very neat I, I haven't seen anything quite like it i dare say somebody out there is screaming now i know what that is put it in the comments folk we love to hear from you and if you're enjoying what we're doing don't forget to pop a like on just give us the thumbs up that would be great and last in my bag for now is a large item Oh, it's a big bottle. It's yes, a pretty it bottle. it would have had a, an internal uh, stopper. Thing. So stopper. we're talking the vulcanized stopper era. But it's one of my favourite companies. Cooperative Hulter Society. CWS, 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 all the way around the bottom. I think that looks like Flash Gordon spaceship. It does. <laughs> and it's not the first time we've been reminded of that. But I think, I'll check when I get to the shed, I think it's the first time we've had a CWS yes. in that very stylized 1930s design. So I'm very pleased with that. I've spotted another little area just beyond the ivy and the trees. I think that's definitely worth investigating and I'd better be quick 
because I see Caroline's coming up the path towards it. This is a nice little spot and I found this on the way up. Yeah, so it's a piece of royal commemorative china off a mug, I would say. And then let's have a look at these bottles. We've got some sauce bottles. And there's a bit of a melted wonky bottle. Oh, this one's got a stopper in. Oh, that's, oh, nice. that's lovely. There's nothing on the stopper, but it actually comes with its stopper. I think there's another one there. Is that a stopper as well? Have a look. Um, yep, I think it's a stopper. It looks very rusty. I think mm, it's been could... next to metal, but I think it is a Oh, no. Look on stopper. the side. Maybe it was a metal one. I don't know. Oh, right. I'll try taking it out. Have a look. I will investigate. Oh, go on then. Metal cap. Ah, right. It did look so much like a stopper, it did. didn't it? Perhaps that was the design, though they wanted them to look like stoppers at first. Possibly, yeah, quite likely. But that is a definite stopper. Yeah, lovely big bottle. Indeed. I've just remembered. What's that? I put one find in my pocket. Oh, right. And it is oh, a lid full a lid. of teapot. Oh, shame that the little. Knob yeah, a bit of a ding here. Oh, yeah. But on the other hand, if it fits, it'll put a top on, and I can always take that either make a new clay top or leave it as it is or chop him straight off right whatever takes my mood Ooh, some lovely plants and some lovely jars it's another one of those like i don't know if faceted would be the word and ridged isn't quite the word not quite sure what the word would be i think there are two perhaps decker gone that would be perhaps the right amount of it size i've got a flat bit where the label went and Got this little square jar here with a pattern on. I thought it was writing, but it's just a pattern. And a slightly bigger square one for you, dear. Oh, yes. There we go. That one there. Oh, they're quite a nice little selection of bottles already, or jars, I should say. There are the beautiful bluebells and a few white bells. And then you just turn around here and there are some bottle diggers holes where they're not sort of holes they're more mining excavations because it's on the side of a hill there are a few things they've left behind we've got a cute little jar a broken jar oh i can see a paste pot a little shipham's paste pot there another jar What news is that? Hmm, do you think that's off a gas fire? That's what comes to mind for me, is a gas fire. Do you reckon I'm right or completely wrong? It's a little jar. It's got a brown tinge. I wonder if... Oh, it is. I wondered if it was amber or not. Or whether it was just dirty, but it is amber glass. We could find some daylight, which is rather difficult. Oh, there's Phil. Oh, you found some good things? I found some things I like. All oh, right, we'll come have a look. And this one, I think is a first. All oh, right. Because it's got a lid on. Oh, very good, very good. Let's see what we can see on this bit of slope. We've got a melted paste pot. And a tin. Oop, the bottom of a rusty tin. And we've got up here, oh, I don't know if I'm showing you in the right place, a melted bottleneck. There's a whole bottle. There. That's a nice one. And let's have a look down a little bit. You see a jar over there. A plain jar. And some lots of broken things. So we'll go on a little bit further and see what we can see over there. Ah, oh, maybe this will help to shed some light on things. <laughs> it's a light bulb. And all the best things are quite high up. So look at this. It's a jar. Is it whole? Yes, it's whole. Look at the beautiful woodland plants we've got. It's all lush and green. Quite a lot of colour at the moment. Let's see. A melted sauce bottle. Sorry if it's a little bit bumpy. It's a melted sauce bottle. And we've got most of a cup there. Oh, I can hear somebody with a chainsaw in the distance. 
I have finds. Oh, let's have I a look. I have finds in my hand. I have finds in my pocket. Ooh. I have finds that I like. Mm. Finds that could be a first for us. But before I show you my finds, yes. people have been asking me, please can we see more of Carfilly Castle? So I have been out to make a little video of the castle showing more than the gateway which came into our trip to Taff. So before I show you what I found in this part of Wales, let's go over to another part of Wales, right in the middle of our county, in the town of Caerphilly, and have a look at the biggest medieval castle in Wales. Some people believe that the castle was built by one of the great princes of Wales. Well, that rumour, I can tell you, is not true. But the formidable medieval castle that you see here in front of you was inspired by the fear of a Welsh prince, Llewellyn Ap Griffith. Not only did he inspire fear in the marcher lords of the time, but he also attempted to demolish this castle before it was finished on two occasions. The rise of a powerful prince in Wales was not what the marcher lords wanted to hear about. And it convinced Gilbert de Clare that he needed a mighty fortress and he needed it fast. So in 1268, he built the biggest castle in Wales and second only to Windsor in the whole of Britain. A formidable task. The moat and castle cover 30 acres. That's three times the size of our national rugby stadium in Wales, the Principality Stadium that was once known as the Millennium Stadium. But the famous Leaning Tower that is here on the castle and is wonkier than the Tower of Pisa wasn't a result of Llewellyn's antics in the early days. Came much later and was the result of the English Civil War conflict when it felt the power of the gunpowder and was dislodged. From that day, they've been waiting for it to fall. Scientists say it shouldn't stand, but stand it does and still draws crowds of people to see it here in Caerphilly. And the future of this castle is secure, because Cadur, which are the body responsible for the Welsh heritage and the buildings that cover this land, have just invested five million pounds in a project that will be concluded next year that will secure its place for the future, not only an historical monument, but an amazing tourist attraction too. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little view of, of Caerphilly Castle. It's so easy for Carlin and myself, where we live near there, to go shopping in the town and just see the castle watch the people feed the ducks and not realise just what an amazing tourist attraction it is and what a fantastic example of medieval building and history and of course our own history with the stories of the great Prince of Wales who once came so close to defeating the Normans and the Marcher Barons. But I did promise you I'd show you my finds. You did. Now this bottle I just liked. Oh, it's a big fat square one. It's a fat, thick square one. Yeah. It's got facets on the side. No no writing on it. No. But it just struck me as a nice it bottle. It struck you. It hit you on the head. I think it's had a bit of an hammering. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not hitting me on the head, no, but it has had a bit of an hammering. Most have. And But I think when it's cleaned up, I think it's going to look nice. Yep. So it went in for its aesthetic 
presentation. Ooh. This one I brought down just to say there is older stuff around you. Right. I think the vast majority of it is being bagged up and taken by the yes. people that dig the holes, which is fair enough. But they overlook that little one. Ooh, we'll have that. So I thought that can come home with me. Now, this is not a first for us to find the bottle, but I don't think we've ever had one with the lid still viral on. Viral with the lid, and the lid's in a pretty poor condition, but it, it does is. have the lid, so But it nice. is a viral bottle, and isn't it? I love the shape of viral bottles. The yep. jars are very cute. So that'll go alongside the others that we have, because they are a lovely shape and a lovely colour. Beautiful amber. Now, I did say this thing's in my pocket. You did? I did indeed. Empty your pockets, lad. I got little things. Because oh, uh, my bag is so full, there's one pot? little paste pot. And here, look at that. Oh, that's nice. It's not a paste pot. I would say that's out of some sort of toiletry set. I and think so. And they had so. a little silver lid on the top. Yes, it may have had a proper silver mm. lid on that, because it's quite a nicely cut thing, isn't it? And in my other pocket, mm. sticking on the theme of small things, I was thinking of you, dear. Oh, Shipham Space Pot. A little Shipham Space Pot. That's not all. Another, Another little pot. paste pot. Oh, I love these with the swags on. They're very grand. And the meat paste. Here's oh, another little paste pot. Different style again. And then I have a paste pot like you've never seen before. Oh, right. Because I did hear you comment on the fact of, oh, there's some melted paste pots. And you walked by. Well, I climbed to the top of this embankment and brought this booty oh, down. Oh, no, that is about the most melted one I've seen. Look at that. Ain't that an that absolute... It's comical. It's so melted. I it's love a it. cracker, <laughs> isn't it? I love that. So... That one is for my collection of melted glass. Okie dokie. Okay. Sometimes when you're walking along paths, you need a little bit of stability, a handrail. And look at this. Nature has provided me a lovely little handrail to hang on to as I pass this tree. Very nice. Thank you, Mr. Tree. Ooh, look what I found. It's a clock face. Oh, I really like that. I wonder what that is. I think that's a bell off the same clock. No, it's a little tin of something. Probably snuff, something like that, but well rusty. Look at this bottle up here. I love this for comic effect. <laughs> Look at that. The top's actually bent around the neck. Looks really good other than the big hole in the back. Cute though. You like my bottleneck, don't you? Well, yes, but the reason I like your bottleneck is because I found something else on the floor. I found oh, this smashed half, half a bottle. Oh, perfect fit. And look at that. Oh, so I get the feeling you're going to take that home and glue it. Am I right? Well, yes. <laughs> I, well, I have got um, a lovely, beautiful, flattened broken bottle that was sent to us by the Happy Mudlarks, who've just started a channel. And that needs gluing because the postman broke it. This one means glue in because the bottle diggers broke it. So I thought I'd take them to the shed and put them together. Why not? And then see what other melted glass I've got and what I could do with it. If we had found nothing today and just walked through this place, it would have been well worth the journey. Nothing can beat that glorious view behind me, this gorgeous dell, these lovely woods, the gorgeous flowers, but on top, I'm going home with a big rusty shovel, a number plate from the good old days, and a lovely melted paste pot. And a dirty pair of socks. And a very dirty pair of socks and a crunchy welly, yes. Yeah. But if you have enjoyed it, then please give us a thumbs up. Doing, doing, doing. And of course, it'd be lovely if you know anyone who would enjoy being with us, then share it with them on social media. But most importantly, until the next time, don't forget, have fun. Bye. Bye.